The nation is currently swept up in a media spiral, and no one can quite get enough of the developing story that is the disappearance of Gabby Petito. What seemed to be a picture-perfect relationship may not actually be all what viewers of Gabby's vlogs had thought. We are here to tell you what we know as of Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, and discuss a case that has anyone with a daughter, sister, or friend shaken to their core. We are your hosts, Helen Allen and Sherry Ferreira. This is The Chalk Line. Good evening, everyone, and the highlights of the news this Thursday. So, for one thing I just want to address, we don't usually cover developing cases, just kind of out of respect for people that are, you know, still grieving and out of respect for getting the facts totally right, because sometimes things come out a little bit later in the investigation that we weren't initially able to get. Yeah, of course, and we always want to bring you the most accurate story possible. Exactly. So, we're going to tread very carefully here, and as always... We cite our sources in the show notes, so if you have questions, if there's discrepancies with anything that we say, you know, go ahead, do your own research, make your own opinions. Exactly. As like always. we said in the intro, this is what we know as of Tuesday, September 21st, so. Right. And a lot of this, you know, we might speculate based on what we know, but also at its core, this is just a very devastating case for the family, and, you know, investigators are in a frenzy, and we are just two people who who are discussing the case, and it's nothing more than that. Everything that we say, I would like for you to take it with a grain of salt, but also do your own research, and, you know, just be aware of everything. Oh, of course. But yeah, this is just kind of a case that the two of us could not stop talking about. Could not stop bothering our boyfriends about. We sound like teenagers, but literally every five seconds. I, I was saying to Matt, I don't know why, but this specifically, like, shakes me to my core. It, it really, not a lot of cases keep me up at night, and this one has. For sure. Because it's like, you feel so close to it in a way. Just reading right. about it and connecting. And it just, I think it is a an important case to tell In terms of... Bringing awareness. Yeah, and, like, not everything on social media is as it seems. At all. Because you look back on those pictures of them traveling, and it's just... You should take everything with a grain of salt on social media. Especially nowadays. I sound like I'm 50, but especially nowadays. No, exactly. And I think that these, this is mostly why I wanted to cover this because this, unfortunately, the future of missing persons cases and crimes, it's like everyone. and, and, And if you don't know, if you're listening to this and you don't know about this case, sorry, because we're kind of jumping all over the place right now, but. (laughs) It is a case that people are heavily aware of on social media, on TikTok, on Twitter. And so I think, obviously, Sherry and I are internet sleuths to begin with in our <laughs> own right. But, you know, this almost almost walks the line of what's appropriate to put on social media about true crime cases and, you know, developing cases. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Oh, yeah. Brian Laundry first met Gabby Petito at Bayport Blue Point High School on Long Island, according to Gabby Petito's stepfather, Jim Schmidt. Sorry, I'm going to be very annoying in this episode, and I'm going to say according to all the time because, like I said, it's a developing case, and I just want to get it as right as I can. The couple has been dating since March 2019, and in July 2020, they announced their engagement. This whole timeline that I am getting is from a CNN article that is in our show notes. If there's any discrepancies, again, it is from the CNN article. So they announced their engagement in July 2020. However, this past Wednesday, Gabby's mother, Nicole Schmidt, told the Daily Mail that she believed that the couple had actually called off their engagement 
before they went on their trip because they were feeling that they were kind of too young to get married. Yeah, which is exactly what I heard too, that right before their trip, they decided to call it off. Yes. Now, let's go to June 2021. Gabby and Brian kind of embark on this cross-country journey. The plan was to travel in Gabby's whiteboard van to the West Coast and visit state parks across the whole Western U.S. Gabby continuously maintained regular communication with her family throughout this time, and that communication abruptly stopped around the end of August. Before we get to that part, I think it's important to discuss an event that happened on August 12th, 2021. This event happened in Utah. Um, A police officer kind of was driving behind them and... It it was because they were speeding, so the officer took notice. So you can can look it up, this body cam from this officer, so you can listen to it, watch it, whatever. At first he says it's like a 25, but then he corrects himself and says it's a 15, and apparently they are going 45 miles per hour. So in that, in itself, it's alarming to him. As he is, like, tailing them, kind of, and ready to pull them over, they kind of hit a curb and go over the curb, and then, so obviously he's, like, worried that... Yeah, he's thinking that they're either intoxicated, something's not right, so... Yeah, or just, like, unsafe driving to begin with. So he pulls them over, and, you know, he basically just separates the two of them immediately. He... Well, he first talks to them when they're in the car... And she is very quick, Gabby is very quick to apologize for distracting him, um, Brian. And it basically just becomes the police officer being like, okay, I thank you for letting me know. I'm going to separate you two. So he brings Gabby over to his car and Brian is still at the, the van. And I don't know if it was because of this reason that I'm about to say, but when he did approach them, he did see that she was crying and mostly in distress Mm -hmm. so he definitely wanted to talk to her first and sort of hear her perspective on everything and like you said separate the two right and she like I even think maybe crying is an understatement she is so shaken up and yes crying but there's just something about her that she is so distraught and so panicked exactly I was gonna say panic or anxious or just something yeah festering in her Right, so basically he, like, he talks them through it. He describes Gabby as being confused and emotional, which, you know, I have a boyfriend. (laughs) You have a boyfriend. Oh. (laughs) Lots of things leave me confused and emotional. (laughs) Oh, my God. Scorned, even. (laughs) So this at at this point, I'm not, like, judging her, obviously. No one should be. Everybody in a relationship can be confused and emotional at points. Oh, especially with the ones closest to you. Yeah, that's who you take your stuff out on to. Regardless of that, he thinks, again, it's important to separate them. He talks to them both separately. And Gabby kind of mentions that they had a very rough morning. She talks about how she kind of owns up to the fact that she's quote-unquote mean to him sometimes. Which, you know, again... I have a boyfriend. We say things to each other when we're in a heat of the moment time, but I think it speaks levels that she is, like, unloading this on to a police officer. Yes. Because to me, that's more of a cry for help than it is just, like, venting to your friend about, like, oh my god, I said this to my boyfriend and I feel bad about it. Like, it is maybe, like, she recognizes that... You know, it's to a point where it's not a normal relationship. Exactly. And in the video, it is way more intense than what we could obviously describe. Right. I just recommend that anybody who is interested in this case just goes and listens or watches it themselves. Because you can definitely hear in the tone of her voice that she is just unloading all of this that's on her chest. And she's speaking fairly quickly and just very... Like we said, like something's festering inside of her and she's just unloading all of this. And to me, you know, of course this is speculation, but to me she sounds like a woman who is triggered by a man who doesn't understand her needs. I think she she says it herself. She deals with anxiety and depression. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously 
that's a huge piece of her and you need a significant other that's going to be there by your side through that through your episodes that you have and you need someone who's going to help you be better and not help you um see yourself in a more negative light like the fact that she is unloading all this stuff being like i'm bad to my boyfriend to this police officer makes me feel like her boyfriend makes her feel bad for who she is or for just some of the stuff that she has going on and like you said obviously in a relationship with your significant other especially your significant other or anyone else you're going to want them to sort of help you like you would do them and in this video it's very clear that she is placing a lot of what has happened to make them drive crazy on herself. Yeah. At least that's what I am. And, you know, he, the officer also then goes and talks to Brian. Yes. And Brian takes little to no ownership. He is a smooth talker to the police officer, but he's not like, yes, I did something that made her mad. He's like, ugh, she gets mad when I don't have shoes on. She has OCD. Exactly. He's, like, kind of blaming her and almost making her seem like she is out of line for feeling feelings. Yeah. I just can't understand. This is the first encounter they've ever had with this police officer, and they're both just going to, like, unload in this way. And he's unloading in a sense of being like, Yeah, I'm a hero for putting up with all the stuff that she gets mad at. In the way, the manner in which he speaks, it's as if he has no ownership over his actions, no accountability over him participating in it. It's it's just very, like, surface level. Like, I'm trying to get this police officer to understand I'm the good guy in this situation. And then he even says, like, oh, don't charge her or something. Like, trying to act like a hero instead of being like, no, listen, we're both in the wrong a lot of the time. It's not a big deal. Like, this stuff happened. He, like, it's just very, like... Yeah, I know. It could be that Sort of brushing know. off the yeah severity of the situation of if a police officer pulled you over and your girlfriend was in such distraught, you'd think there'd be more of a, like, feelings yeah. to it rather than being it like, this happens like, every day. reminds me of, like, the toxic, like, white athlete from your high school who oh. talk <laughs> themselves out of anything. Yes! And they just know that they have that... I don't know if it's, I don't want to say charisma because you're not getting that credit, but they have this way about them where they can sort of slide under the- But like people are fooled by it. Yes. And it's, that is really, when I was listening to that, that is all I could consider is that he's like the kid who skates because he's good at basketball when, and, oh. and he can do no wrong because the town will say, I don't know. Yeah, it's, like, that's it was the I, most frustrating thing to hear- Gabby speak about her issues and being like, this was all on me. Mm-hmm. And just have someone who is closest to her, someone who's known her practically her entire life, not say anything, not take accountability over his actions, not have a little bit more compassion for her. Yeah. It was... It's very... You're right. Like, it's it lacks compassion. Yes. I think that is really what it was. It sounded very surface level. At the end of the day... The police officer is there to do what he can in that moment, and it didn't seem like either of them were putting each other in crazy danger in that moment. But the police officer, and he's with another person at this point, does say, well, you know, we're not actually allowed to act on discretion for situations like this. There is a clear cut when it's intimate partner violence, situations Mm -hmm. like that. There's like a clear protocol that we have to do, and so we do have to separate you guys. So it ended up being that they put up Brian in a hotel that night and Gabby stayed in the van so that the two of them could, like, kind of cool off and separate each other. They did also describe another situation to the police officer, which I feel like I don't really want to get too into these talks with the police officers because I think that it can end up being nitty gritty and until we know more, I would like to Or factually that it happened. It's hard to bring up something so drastic and be like... This was a definite indication of this when it could have been a false reporting. Exactly. So they had told the police officer that they had kind of a rough morning and there was like a report of Brian, I guess, trying to, quote, create distance by telling Gabby to go take a walk and calm down. She did not want to be separated from, this is a quote, by the way, she did not want to be separated from the male and began slapping him. 
He grabbed her face and pushed her back as she pressed upon him and the van. He tried to lock her out and succeeded except for his driver's door. She opened that and forced her way over him and into the vehicle before it drove off. So, allegedly, that was reported, um, and then they do, they talk about that, and she Mm. kind of tries to be like, no, like, I was mad at him, it's okay, like, he didn't really do anything, he was just trying to get space from me, like, she's really owning up to everything all on her own. You know, initially, the officer's report said that he believed, quote, it was reported that the male had been observed to have assaulted the female, But then he later wrote that, quote, no one reported that the male struck the female. And as of recently, I'll link it in our show notes, the person who reported this came forward. I believe it was an article on E, not concrete, but they did come out and say that they saw um, him assault her. They saw Brian assault Gabby. So, yes, they released a 911 call um, from that day. And the 911 operator is like, what happened? And the caller tells the 911 operator, well, we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. Then we stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. With that, I think that's all that we should honestly say about that topic because I just don't want to, you know, do it an injustice by speculating or talking about it too much because, again, this is what we have and that's that. Um, sorry, I feel like I'm being so annoying in this episode, being like, and with that, we're not talking about it further, (laughs) (laughs) because I'm just like, I really, um, want to have respect for the fact that her family is grieving. So, on August 24th, um, Gabby FaceTimes with her mother and tells her that she is leaving Utah and heading to the Teton Range in Wyoming. On August 25th, there are multiple texts between Gabby and her mom. The, um... Family believes that she is in the Tetons on this day, so August 25th. On August 27th, there was kind of a weird um, text exchange between oh, Gabby and yeah. her mom. And this time, her family believes that she was still in the Tetons. Um, according to Fox News, there was a search warrant for computers and hard drives in the van. It was a strange text that they end up investigating. So this is according to the search warrant. Quote, on August 27, 2021, Gabby's mother, Nicole Schmidt, received a, quote, odd text from her. The text message read, quote, can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. Unquote. Document said that specifically, like that is the text itself. Um, It goes on to explain that Stan is actually Gabby's grandfather, but her mom is, like, very sketched out by this because Gabby never refers to her grandfather as Stan. So she's like, why would this be the first time she ever refers refers to him him that that way? Yeah. So, and, and this in itself is also what gave police probable cause to search Brian's home, but we'll get to that eventually. On August 30th, her family receives their last text message from Gabby. They don't think that she wrote it. Very adamant about that, by the way. Yes. According to Richard Stafford, who is the family attorney, the text message that they were served was, quote, no service in Yosemite. That's it. Again, I don't want to speculate about this, but... You know, she is FaceTiming her parents. She's texting her family. Like, she is close with her family. I don't... I'm putting myself in her shoes, and I'm like, if I'm in a place so far away from home, and I need to send a text being like, I don't have any service, it's probably going to be a little bit more heartfelt. It might be like, no service, I'll text you as soon as I can. No service, love you. Something Or even an estimation of when she would communicate next because it, she was exactly. doing it so frequently. Exactly. So I, I, that I understand why her family is very put off by it. I don't think it is an easy thing to, to digest. Over, like, especially yeah. people who are closest to her and would know the way that they she was that, texting. Exactly. And know that she would be the person to always be in touch or at least let you know when she would be in touch next. Like, Yeah. And that's so true because, like, you know, if anyone close to me ever gets a text from me where I use the letter U instead of Y-O-U, oh. that's not me. Oh, no. You no, know what I mean? No. There's always going to be 
like doubt that it's not me mm. if I type like that. Exactly. And I'm sure her parents, like, that's a horrible example, but I'm <laughs> sure her parents are analyzing her messages, being like, no, that one sounds like her. That one's a little weird. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, how can they not? And I don't, I, I agree with them that they should be looking into the text messages that don't feel like they were from her. Of course. September 1st, 2021. Brian Laundry returns to his home in Northport in Florida, where his parents live, and that's it. It just he returns. The white car, the van that Gabby and Brian have been traveling in, was later recovered by police at the home. It was processed and, quote, there was some material in there that authorities will be going through. But at this point, as of Tuesday night, we don't really know what that is specifically. I just don't, I cannot physically wrap my head around, mentally, I cannot, I, nothing. I cannot in any form of any way, <laughs> I, I, I'm literally at a loss of words for why in his right mind would he think it's okay to come home with the van and not her. Exactly. Regardless of what happened. She may be frolicking in Utah, but why the hell aren't you? That is a person you've known practically your entire life. Or like, I'm sorry, but you can't find her? Leave the van there and get a plane ticket at the very least. So she doesn't have nowhere. Exactly. Like, to me, him coming home means him knowing she is no longer there. That is how I initially thought of the case. Mm -hmm. By September 11th, 2021, after not being able to get in touch with her, Gabby's family, who lives in New York, reports her missing to the Suffolk County, New York Police Department. When Northport authorities go to Brian Laundrie's home, they're essentially told that they're, like, only to deal with the attorney and the family and Brian will not speak to them. They the literally- parents do not let Brian talk at all they don't even see brian and it's just you want to talk about this talk to our attorney Mm -hmm. like they literally just gave them the business card and it's like bye yeah so that's that and by september 16th like at this point gabby's family is pleading in the press for brian's family to just kind of help in the investigation (sighs) i mean it's literally devastating in a letter read by um gabby's family attorney during a news briefing They say, quote, please, if you or your family have any decency left, please tell us where Gabby is located. Tell us if we are even looking in the right place. All we want is for Gabby to come home. Please help us make that happen. And I just want to also say, mind you, Gabby has been living with Brian's family before they went on their trip Gabby was living with Brian's family. So I don't know if to you it gives you, like, it speaks volumes to me that you could let a person live in your home and let them in to love your son and then they go missing and you just don't want to help the investigation. At reading, hearing them reading that and like reading all the news about it, it's just heartbreaking and if anything it's just frustrating because right. like you said they know gabby yeah she's not a random girl exactly and so regardless of that my whole thing is just i can't understand the not helping it because you know at the end of the day whether you know what happened to her or not she's a per- like i don't know i i just This is, like, the thing that really makes me so upset. And if his family, if we find out days or weeks from now that his family, like, did everything they could somehow and we just didn't know about it, I'm still, it wasn't enough. Because if I, like, I I keep putting myself in this situation, if Matt was missing, I would be with Matt's family, I would be calling all the search it like there's just no explanation why anybody would be silent you would be active Mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to be quiet i don't even think 
you would be worried about even how you're going to be perceived. There's no time to worry about that. Because as of this moment, Gabby is alive but missing. That is what we know. So there is no time to be like, oh, but what about a murder charge? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get involved. I'm sorry. That is so true. Because mind you, that they read that September 16th. Mm-hmm. They have no knowledge of what we know now. And exactly. to them, she is still alive. Yep. So, you know, at that point, it's so incredibly sketchy to me that they're silent. Because I would think that people who wanted her safe and home would be raising hell. Mm-hmm. Their home. Yeah. I don't know. It's This is, like, the part that really just makes me so emotional. <laughs> because, like... I just can't understand for the life of me. I try and I try to be like, well, maybe this is the case. Maybe it's this. I cannot think of any rational situation where you should stay quiet while your son's ex fiance is missing. missing. And her family is so frantically looking for her. Like, I, what on God's green earth would possess you? And they're asking for... Quite literally, the bare minimum of just talk to us. Literally. That's just it. where did he leave her? Mm-hmm. Just where was he when he took the van and decided Gabby's not going to be in it? Where was he when he thought he would never see Gabby again, so he may as well just take the van and go home? Like, when was that moment? That why wasn't even his, we... by the way, right? It was It was her Gabby's van. van. And I'm sorry, but why don't we have the answer... As to why he came home. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it's, even the parents can't be like, oh, well, you know, something happened to her and he's he can't talk about it now. He's so distraught. I don't get why there's not at least, even a bad one, but why there is not at least one explanation. Mm-hmm. Because, sure, there is, what's it called, that thing that everyone says, trial by public opinion. Mm-hmm. And where they might not want their son to be all... Caught up in this, but I mean, like you said, at this point, she's just missing. After several days of both Gabby's family and police pleading with Brian's family to cooperate in the investigation, Brian's family requests police to come to their home, where they let police know they haven't seen Brian since September 14th. So that is last Tuesday. And so this is now Friday, I think, and they, they're they like, oh, actually, we, we gotta tell you something. We actually haven't seen Brian since Tuesday. And I mean, if anyone who has been just having the news on and reading this, this is what really just shifts everything. Right. Because you and, can make excuses up to that point mm-hmm. of what they were doing. Of, exactly. Oh, this, whatever, so have you. But this, this. Right. Just... I'm sorry, but if it's also anything except for that you think your son did it, like if you, like for some reason, maybe someone's out to get both of them, then you would think your son's in danger and you would want the police involved. Mm -hmm. If you think like, oh, something happened to her and my son had nothing to do with it, you would think your son would want her back. So you would think there would be some urgency in helping. But then the fact that their son went missing, apparently... On September 14th, and they're not going to say anything until three days later. It's like, how long was he really missing for at this point? Because and I know, can't trust what That is saying. what I've been thinking. Because I actually read a Fox News article that had said, like, I don't know, it kind of put into question, like, is it really possible for him to have just gotten out on September 14th? Because by then, we already had vans, like, parked out of his house. Someone would have seen him leave. Exactly. Like, it wouldn't have been this hidden thing that no one knew about. And then just three days later, like, oh, we're supposed to believe that all of the media was staked out for three days and didn't just know that he wasn't... I don't know, it's just... Uh, maybe, but it's questionable. It's something to consider that if he did leave when they said, why wasn't... Why didn't anyone else see anything? Yeah. The Northport police said on Twitter... Quote, it is important to note that while Brian is a person of interest in Gabby's disappearance, he is not wanted for a crime. We are not currently working a crime investigation. We are now working a multiple missing persons investigation. Uh, To which 
Yeah, uh, yeah. But to which I think it's important to note that Gabby's family maintains their daughter is missing. Brian is hiding. That is not missing. That is hiding. He walked out of the house on his own accord after his girlfriend is missing and he's under fire for it. Period point blank. That's hiding. By September 18th, Northport police say authorities are conducting a search for Brian at the Carlton Reserve, a natural area with more than 80 miles of hiking trails in Venice, Florida. This is supposedly where he told his parents he was going. And for some reason, we are holding this to be very valuable information from the parents. (laughs) Although, I don't know. Mm. So, um... Roughly 50 law off, law enforcement officers from five local agencies and the FBI are now searching for Brian, um, according to Taylor, the, pl- the police spokesperson. Um, they said that at a news conference. And Taylor added, Laundry has an enormous amount of pressure on him to provide answers to what's going on. And he's the only one who can. Right. And, but like, obviously... Aren't we like, yeah, he's under pressure. And guess why? Because he's not answering anybody. Mm -hmm. If last week he came back and was like, or two weeks ago now, he came back from this trip and was like, oh my God, something terrible happened to her. I need help. And I would like to help as much as I can to find her. No one would be mad at him. I mean, people would be mad at him, but many less people. Oh, yeah. Like now the entire country is mad at him. Because he has done so little. So, yeah, there's pressure, but I don't really feel that bad. No. Meanwhile, the FBI announces that the agency and its partners are also conducting ground surveys in the Grand Teton National Park that are relevant to Gabby's disappearance. On September 19th, 2021, human remains are discovered in Teton County, Wyoming. And they are, quote, consistent with the description of missing 22-year-old Gabby Petito. By then, full forensic identification had not been completed to 100% confirm that it was Gabby, but they had already notified her family of the discovery. And the news conference is, like, extremely upsetting, and they, like, extend their condolences to the Petito family It's just, like, devastating. By September 20th, um, Brian Laundrie's parents are questioned at their home, and their home is searched for hours. Then people start to spiral on TikTok and YouTube and social media. Everywhere else. A potential clue comes on Sunday, September 19th, I think that was. Um, where basically this, like, vlogging couple posted a video to YouTube of what they thought was Gabby and Brian's van near the Wyoming camping area that they were in. Um, this is Kyle and Jen Bethune. Um, they said that the video was taken on their GoPro and basically, like, that... I don't know, Jen Bethune, like, says, like, oh, like, I saw the van plates were from Florida, and I'm also from Florida, so I thought that maybe we would go and say hi, but the van appeared to be completely dark and abandoned. Like, there was no one there. So they figured that they maybe were, like, hiking, or they were just, like, sleeping inside or something. There were no doors open, but something that people do point out that was interesting, because you can find, we'll put in the, um, in the pictures on our Instagram Um, there's a picture where you can, like, kind of zoom up and see one flip-flop on, like, next to the van. It's, like, very (sighs) ominous. It's just, like, a flip-flop. And so, I don't, that's, like, obviously, like, we don't know that that was the flip-flops she was wearing, but it's, it's ominous to see that in a picture. But I would also like to, like, say, um... I don't necessarily think that um, it's very important for us to be talking about these, like, internet things. I This one I think is okay um, to talk about. Obviously, it's a picture of the van. It helps police place, like, okay, the van was here at this point. Um, 
And this one was kind of a total accident um, because Jen Bethune, like, she actually didn't really even know she took that picture or that video. Um, But she was, like, I think watching the news or something. And then people said, like, if you were in this area, check your footage, pay attention. And that is what brought it to our attention. And literally she was editing her video and saw the van. So this was, like... You know, she didn't, she wasn't asking for extra credit or clout or anything like that. But I think it's important to just kind of note that, you know, sometimes social media can be very helpful to things like this, but it also can be maybe potentially detrimental. Like, um, there was a girl on TikTok who review, revealed she maybe gave like a ride to someone who she thought was Brian Laundry. And, um, she believes that it was him. He said that he, quote, needed to go to Jackson, where she was already headed. But about 20 minutes later, she meant he, she mentioned, quote, Jackson Hole. And he, like, allegedly got all freaked out and asked to get out. Um, she says, once I said Jackson Hole, he became agitated. Um, he seemed like he needed to get out. He was kind of antsy. And that's when things got weird. Um, She said they let him out by the Jackson Dam, and then he walked across the street and into a nearby crowded parking lot, presumably to, like, continue hitchhiking. Um, She says that she put this TikTok video out because she's hoping that someone can identify him and just, like, to raise awareness, which, you know, it's kind of a slippery slope. I do think it's important to raise awareness to get his face out there considering he is missing and people should be aware of him. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we run the risk of... False reporting. False reporting, um, overwhelming, you know, the officers that have to investigate tips. And And on top of that, it's just like, where do we... How do we know which TikTok video is credible? And how do we know who's on TikTok to, like, exploit this tragedy and who is on it to actually raise Phrase awareness. awareness. Exactly, because that is a major pro of, like, these new apps that we have, like TikTok mm-hmm. and YouTube. It brings a lot of awareness, but it can garner the wrong attention yeah. to... No, not the wrong attention. Well, it can no, garner attention and, to the wrong type of video. Yes, and because I we know firsthand, you know, when tragedies happen, people take these things and they make comedy TikToks out of it and they make disgusting things for for attention and humor and views and it's just it's kind of I don't know I hate that we live in a world where I'm like oh and another sighting is Mm -hmm. on TikTok because I'm like I wish we didn't have to rely on that I love the fact that now we can get information out to younger people and younger people can be aware of the news in those ways but I'm also like is this the most appropriate way to spread awareness about a missing person and, a, like, for a grieving and family? And almost is there a way that we can, like, not get ahead of it, but is there a way we could verify this before it does become this massive thing? Like, my thing is, okay, if you have this sighting that you are so concrete about, before maybe taking a video, maybe make it and it's fresh in your mind, show police... Or right. talk to them. And or if like, they do discount that... It would that, be one thing, too. Like, if she... So, she did report to police that she thinks that she um, gave him a ride. And I, I don't I don't even know if at this point it's disputed. I'm ready to believe that it is her uh, him that she gave a ride to. But at the end of the day, that's between her and law enforcement. And I think that's kind of where it should be left. And I think if she wanted to make a video of, like you guys watch out for this man, he's dangerous, she would have made the video, you guys watch out for this man, he's dangerous. Not like, I had my 15 minutes of fame because exactly, I because gave him a ride. It's like And you grasping. don't even necessarily have to say that. It's just the tone that it comes across when this case is at this heightened level of everyone wants yeah. to know what's happening. It's like you almost want to backtrack yeah. to be like, let me rephrase this or let me put this out as hey this might have been this is not him yeah which i mean there's so much other things that go into that which would anyone even care if she said might and not exactly it was him so would we even know that's also true to play devil's avocado (laughs) but it's it's just hard with social media yeah it's really hard my god we're old hell i know (laughs) 
<laughs> we're like kids nowadays. Yeah, we're like back in my day. <laughs> we're, we're like her Those age. Those pesky little kids, they just don't know how to use the internet. <laughs> the Wi-Fi's. <laughs> the Wi-Fi. I'm trying to hook up the Wi-Fi, <laughs> and these kids just won't stop with their tickety talking. Is. <laughs> I hate how quick you switch to that point. <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, um, on this Tuesday, September 21st, as of our recording... Which the, is 8.34 p.m. Just, it's night, Yes, it's we are night, wrapping y'all. this up at night. Um, the last thing that we know is that the autopsy officially ruled the body that was found to be Gabby Petito. One thing we still don't know for certain is what was her manner of death. We will be doing the best we can to um, give updates on our social media account, um, just in a sense of, you know, if if this case, if the manner of death is re- disclosed, if um, this case ends up going to trial, things like that. Um, but again... We're not really in the business of projecting other people's opinions and, um, you know, saying things that are not fact. So, again, do your own research on this case. Get up to date. Get up to speed. And stay aware because anybody can be Gabby Petito. And that's just a sad reality, but we have to be aware of that. Thanks for listening. You can catch us on Instagram at the Chalkline Pod, Twitter at the Chalkline Pod, and you can follow along with our YouTube channel. The link is in our Instagram bio. Tune in next Thursday for another story.